now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Welcome, 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 welcome to Texas. No, 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 DFW Real Estate. New name, new intro, producer Courtney. We're uh, we're getting it together. I, we'll land this plane smoothly by by next week, if not the next. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. DFW Real Estate talking all things residential real estate all across the Metroplex, Dallas, Fort Worth, and everything in between. Send us your questions. You can find us online at toddtremontiteam.com, or you can call or text 214-310-0008. Lots of conversations in and around the real estate market lately about the economy, the stock market, the Federal Reserve, interest rates, bank can't foreclose, well, not foreclosures, bank closures. Uh, and what does that mean for you? What does that mean for us here in Dallas, Fort Worth? Do we buy? Do we sell? Should we panic? Always a fair question. And we'll answer those questions and more as we make our way through the show today. So send your questions in. You can find us all the places. Producer Courtney may even tell you all the places. I'll give. I'll take a shot real quick. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, the YouTube, and for the first time ever, and I don't know how I feel about this, people, but on the TikToks. We're on the TikToks. On TikTok. First... Um, I don't know that it was the first comment on TikTok, but it was definitely the first one that Courtney forwarded me this week. Uh, apparently, I referenced the American Dream in a video, and this comment, Dusty Rhodes, this commenter felt the need to comment back. No, the American Dream is just to smoke weed. No, it's Dusty Rhodes from the to which, 90s wrestling scene. To which I felt like maybe we should reply, but I don't know the etiquette of TikTok yet. But I, that's actually not the American dream. And I'm not saying that way back in the origins of our fine country, there there wasn't there wasn't some marijuana involved. I'm not saying that. I don't know that aspect of our national history, Courtney. Maybe TikTok is where you find intellectual conversations like that. I don't know for sure. But I know that what you can find right here on DFW Real Estate is a very realistic conversation about what is happening in and around residential housing in and around Dallas, Fort Worth, and everything in between. So send us your questions, 214-310-0008. Ian Daniels, ladies and gentlemen, the English wonder himself is back from across the pond, but not the normal pond, a different pond. He went Pacific this time, not Atlantic. He did not go back to the motherland, but, and I will say this, it's not even that big of a butt here. It would appear as though he may be desiring to take up permanent residence west and not east. The Yanni Donny himself. Welcome back, Ian. Hey. Yay. Oh, look at that <laughs> classless response. That's just dirtbaggery at its finest. Listen, people, he went to Hawaii and we weren't sure he was coming back. There were to be there were gigabytes of photos being shared on the company's Slack channel. If you know Ian on social media, you know exactly what his there were dolphins involved. There was a convertible, and I mean, it was. We didn't know he was coming back. We don't have time to break it all down. But welcome back. Do you know who this first segment is brought to us by? No idea. I'm still on Hawaii time. Okay. Order. Well, it is as it is always. Patrick Glaros and his team over at Cardinal Financial. It is Patrick Glaros and it is his entire team over at Cardinal Financial where Patrick has put together an amazing group of people that will take phenomenal care of every single one of uh, his clients. You can go to patrickglaros.com where you can find more information on Patrick. You can start an application right there whether you're looking to buy a home, refinance a home, or if you just have some questions that he can help you with, he's always happy to or somebody on his team will. PatrickGlaros.com, 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308-804. See that? Haven't missed a beat. Uh, I wouldn't say you didn't miss a beat. It took seven beats to get that going. But I'm glad you're back. And uh, I spoke with Patrick just this very week about some of my own mortgage needs. So when you have mortgage needs, just do what I do. Go to patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, patrickglaros.com. Okay, we have a pile of questions over here, but before we dive into them, I do want to make sure that our friends and our listeners know that we want to answer your questions. 
So if you have a question about your home buying, your home selling, your potential remodel, your financing, you don't have to be currently in the act of hiring an agent, although we are the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. And of course, uh, we'd love to earn your trust as your broker and real estate agents of choice. When it comes time to buy, sell, or invest, I think you'd be crazy to not at least have a conversation with our team. Even if you have an agent that you think you'll work with, uh, jump on the phone or on Zoom, compare us, and uh, and we'll be a, a resource for you one way or the other. Now, um, you can find us online at toddtremontiteam.com. You can find us on all the social stuffs. Just look up my name, Todd Tremonti. You'll probably find us as Todd Tremonti Realtors, or you might just find my name. But look up Todd Tremonti. You'll find us just about anywhere. We'd be thrilled to help you. We'd be thrilled to take your questions throughout the week. We'll answer those in between the shows, but we'd also be glad to discuss those questions here on the show so that it will benefit many others who have similar questions. You are listening to DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. You can check us out on the podcast after the show on Apple Podcasts. Just look for my name, Todd Tremonti, and DFW Real Estate Weekly. And we'll be thrilled to give you past episodes of the show, as well as some surprise content over there, much like the YouTube channel, which if you want a direct link to, you can go to tthst.tv, but you don't need to, because all you have to remember is toddtremontiteam.com, and you can find everything we're talking about, uh, audio, podcast, videos on YouTube, scorecards where you can find out if you're home buyer ready, if you're if you're home seller ready, meaning what's your score on your readiness quiz. You can also find out what your home would sell for or rent for in less than 60 seconds with our home valuation tool. All of that is online at toddtremontiteam.com. That's toddtremontiteam.com. All right, questions. What have we got? Well, there was an interesting article that got sent out um, and it was talking about open door and talking about just kind of that whole home flipping world as it is but it was specifically talking about how open door have you know it had one of the worst quarters that they've maybe ever had and that is saying something over the last you know the the q4 um was down 25 percent year over year and in august of last year they actually lost money on 42 percent of homes that they sold right so my question is, and I think the question which kind of comes from this article is, is this something that we're seeing across that side of the industry that was so popular and was booming for, you know, I'm going to say 18 months. It felt like, like so many commercials were well, open door all these other companies because it's not just them. There's Let me just jump in with a couple of hot takes. Open door's never been a good business, period. Right. Open door has always been a flawed model. Open Door has in many ways always been a deliberate misdirection. Now, we've said that on this show for eight plus years. Open Door made a move into the DFW market 10 or 11 years ago, maybe even earlier than that, at least with their big public marketing. And I'm not just picking on Open Door. I just want to call Open Door what Open Door is and has always been. They're wholesalers. They're flippers. They are not a real estate company like 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 we are at the Taj Mahal Home Selling Team or your local big brokerage or your friend who has a real estate license. That's not the business they're in. They are in the business, and this is very clear. Anyone who pays any attention would not necessarily listen to the flowery words of their ads, but would just think for a second and realize their goal is to buy your house low and sell it high. That's the job. Wholesale. Wholesale. Sometimes they would do a tiny bit of work, but very rarely did they ever actually add any value to a home. Oftentimes they would actually sell it in worse condition than they bought it in because they didn't maintain it. Well, I was going to say, we have we, you know agents on our team that would yeah. go into open door homes that were for sale, often reported back how bad a state they were in because yeah. nobody was keeping an eye on them. Yeah, there's, the door had been open and there's leaves and mud and all that stuff in the house. The, the reality, and again, I, I'm not attacking them in any way. I'm just saying this is what that com company is. And this is what many other companies like them are or were. And there, you know, Zillow got, in, in, got into that type of the business and then they got out of that type of the business. There are many others. And I'm not going to name names because it's not worth our time. But the point is, 
that business, the core of that business is to buy a house so that they could soon after sell that house and make money. But the messaging was always, you know, don't go to the horrible, you know, trouble of having a real estate agent. You know, the for, God forbid the terrible tragedy of having to show your home. It's so bad. Yet they were presenting themselves as someone that would make you a full price market offer, which of course doesn't work. But what happens from time to time, they would make an offer that was not a good investor offer, still was not a great offer. We could almost always get a better offer from a traditional buyer. And then they would go sell that house and they just thought, you know, jack the price up, we'll sell it and that's how we make money. And it didn't work 40 something percent of the time. Yeah. So the point is open doors in big trouble. We've been saying this for years. This is not a sustainable business model. This is a business model that rushes in with venture capital money and tries to take advantage of the extremes of the market. And they were never booming. Their name was booming. Their messaging was booming. But they were almost never profitable in any quarter, much less consecutive <laughs> quarters, much less any sustained run. When it was interesting because at the very beginning, they were buying left, right, and center, everything they could possibly get. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you saw their models shift very slightly to where, well, we're now only going to do, I think it was yeah. $350,000 well, and below. It would, it would change fairly frequently. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make it bad. But they would say, okay, we're no longer acquiring homes in this market above 350 Or we're no longer acquiring anything with a pool. Or we're no longer acquiring anything near an apartment complex. Or, you know, things like that. Yep. Now, look, all investors have criteria. There's nothing wrong with that. But it just wasn't as presented. And they got in big trouble for that. They got fined a lot of money for misleading marketing. But I'm not here to pick on them. I'm just saying yes to your question. Is this, is this a sign of that that type of model is really not working anymore? Yes. Now, that doesn't mean a local investor might not be able to buy your home and then sell it and make money and everybody could come out okay because they might actually pay you fair market value because of the condition of your home and actually add value by updating it, remodeling it, cleaning it up or something like that. But I would challenge anyone listening, never, ever, ever accept an all cash investor offer on your house until you've at least spoken with us. And we've been able to tell you, well, this is what we could get you in the next three, four, five, six weeks from a traditional buyer. I would argue that 95, maybe 98 out of 100 times, we can get you significantly more money. And there really is very, very little hassle because we handle all that for you. But even if there was some hassle, you know, would you handle a mildly annoying two-week experience to make 60000 extra dollars? I don't know very many people that would not. I'll deal with some showings for a week or two if I can make tens of thousands of additional dollars. So go to toddtremontiteam.com and uh, we could connect with you very, very quickly and tell you what your house would sell for or rent for right now in less than 60 seconds. If that's all you want, if you just want to know what would my house sell for or rent for right now, you can go to valuethishouse.com, valuethishouse.com. Dot com. You put your address in, it pulls up all your auto information automatically. You click a button and it will email you a property valuation in less than one minute. Valuethishouse.com. Yep. And if you want to learn more about home warranties and how they can help you, go to homeserve.com. Homeserve.com. Uh, do what so many of our clients have done. And they have a home serve home warranty. And it has given them a lot of peace of mind, especially during that first year that they're in a home. There's unknowns, there's things that come up. And uh, the folks over at HomeServe do an amazing job of taking care of their clients. Christine over there uh, continues to just check in and make sure everything's good. And I get, we keep reporting everything is uh, hunky-dory uh, over there. So As they say. HomeServe.com is where you can find out all your information about that. Um, follow up on what we were just talking about. Do you foresee these companies vanishing completely or... No, Extreme I mean, I can back. see some of these brands vanishing. If you mean like, does ABC Home Flipper, could they go away? Could Open Door shut the doors? Absolutely. Do I see that industry going away? No, there's always investors. Investors are a very healthy part of the market. Now, this is not a popular opinion. As a matter of fact, uh, our good old friend, Chris Croc, who, who has the evening show right here on WBAP, he's always angry when an investor is in his neighborhood or in our market, especially the big, 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 you know, like BlackRock, these big, big, big funds. Now, 
there's some nuance to this argument, but I would argue that the local, you know, historically successful investor, the, the, the person that lives in your community that buys and sells 15 or 20 houses a year and sell, that's their business, they're helping the community by taking oftentimes distressed properties that may bring down the value of neighboring homes, repairing them, adding value, and they are actually investing in their own community. They're doing the right thing because, of course, they're for profit, but they're also wanting to do something that would benefit the area because they are going to stay in the area. That model is going to be here forever. It's in buyer's market, seller market, stable markets, high interest rate, low interest rate, and it's a healthy part of the community. Now, people buying thousands of homes and failing 42% of the time, that's not going to last forever. No. Okay. So you talked about investors buying homes, reselling those homes. What about people that are coming in? This is a big, uh, big issue that's going on in Dallas right now. And there's, I think there's some hearings upcoming yep. about it soon on short-term rentals in single family residential neighborhoods. Yep. And there's kind of a little bit of an uproar about the amount that this is happening. Speaking of Chris Crock, <laughs> get off my lawn. But what are, what are <clears throat> the implications of that? What, like, is this, is this a really terrible thing that there's a bunch of single, you know, in single family residence neighborhoods that there's a, a bunch of short term rentals, which is defined as less than 30 days. But we're talking about oftentimes a couple of days here, a couple of days there. Like what, what's the big like issue with all that? The answer is this. There is not a ton of that happening. But if you bought a home, you'd lived there for 15 or 20 years, you invested in it. And now next door, people are coming and going every two or three days. They're having bachelor parties, bachelorette parties, you know, 40th birthday bashes, and they're staying up till three o'clock in the morning and leaving, you know, beer bottles all over the yard. You wouldn't be happy about no, that. No, of course not. Now, is that the norm? No, I don't think that's the norm. I mean, there's sound restrictions in neighborhoods that apply to any home. You know, there's obviously certain, some things are legal and some things are not. So, no, I don't. There are very, 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 very few areas in DFW where this is like overtaking the neighborhood. But obviously there are some pockets where it's much more popular. You know, near the American Airlines Center, there's a ton of events down there. There's, yeah. there's reasons that more and more of those condos and townhomes are going short-term rental. You know, near the racetrack, near the baseball fields, near the concert venues, near the lake, all the lakes around here. There's more density of them. And that's where some of these arguments are. Hey, should we limit the number of these? Should we charge for a permit? Should we have more restrictions? And I'll be careful to take one side or the other of that. I'm not a big fan of tons of regulation. I think this is a free country. We should keep it that way. But I do think some restrictions, some rules, some oversight is wise because you don't want someone turning the residential home next to you into a full-time business that negatively impacts the lifestyle of other people around you. So I think right. this will be an interesting debate to follow as these laws are proposed and either, you know, uh, made law or not. It's something we will keep our eyes on. I don't think this is a bad idea overall, but I do think if all of a sudden we saw 20, 30% of a neighborhood going that route, it would, it would have some legitimate negative impact. Well, it would completely change the idea of the neighborhood, right? Like mm -hmm. if I think about where I live, and I think about how much time we spend outside with our neighbors on playing on, in the streets, in the yeah. street, on the drive. Like, yeah. like that would, that would be gone. Right. And, and the argument isn't that these shouldn't be allowed. The question is, should they be allowed in a traditional residential neighborhood where the vast majority of the people in the neighborhood, that's where they live all day, every day. Well, um, I know there's other cities that have already kind of outlawed it, nixed it. Yeah. it, right? Like we, we know some folks down in Waco and yeah. one of our uh, good friends down there, Brian, who's a, a amazing agent down in the Waco area, you know, he's told me like, yeah, yeah. you just, there's so few pockets where you can actually go and do a short term rental down there because yeah. they're afraid of that. Yeah. And, and, and it, I think it will continue to grow here. By the way, if Dallas pa passes something that just applies to Dallas, right? You've right. got all these outer lying communities and sub communities and suburbs and all these things. So it's not going anywhere in DFW, but you know, are we going to, allow it to overtake neighborhoods. By the way, I don't think the demand is there for that to happen, but there are certain pockets where that neighborhood could go 100% short-term rental and it could actually sustain itself because of the draw of entertainment, travel, business around it. And I think, you know, people are trying to fight that. For just real quick example, like downtown McKinney. That's a place that people would go for the weekend 
over and over and over and over and over and over. And then throughout the week, it would it would have a negative impact on downtown the grapevines. Yeah. I mean, there's so yeah. many places. Yes, yeah, exactly. Wiley and others. If you have not shopped your insurance for your home or your auto recently, make sure you do that. Contact DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance. DP and his team can make sure that you are getting the absolute best best insurance the most coverage for the best price he has saved me thousands of dollars over the years he's saved todd money he's saved so many of our team members money clients family friends dp.lambert at goosehead.com dp.lambert at goosehead.com you can call him at 214-838-5684 you can go to toddtramoneyteam.com where you can find all of our recommended pros and vendors right there pop quiz time you ready in yep who's putting the roof on my house Right, mm. like as we speak, they might actually already be finished. I'm a pretty good betting man, Todd. So I'm gonna go with PMR roofing. And we didn't make a wager, but had we made a wager, you would have won the bet. Although I would never have bet against it. Anyway, Bingo. PMR roofing, absolutely killing it, putting a roof on one of my properties right now. If not, maybe already finished, depending on how the day went. Um, and look, we've been telling you this for a long, long time, Jordan Collins. And the crew over at PMR Roofing, my good buddy Quentin Tabolka, uh, operates and runs the group. Um, they do what they say they're going to do. They sell you what you need. Not They don't oversell you. They certainly won't undersell you. They're going to do the right thing with exceptional craftsmanship, respect for the homeowner, absolutely fair on all terms and pricing and things like that. I've been really, really impressed, and I've been around roofing for a long time and helped many, many, many clients do roof repairs, roof replacements, roof installs. And uh, we have had the high wind. We have had the freezing weather. We have had some heat already. We've had heavy rain. If you haven't had someone check your room out, uh, your room, your roof out in at least the last two years, if not recently due to the amount of crazy weather we've had, um, you're just setting yourself up for a for a dangerous and massive expense very, very soon. So have PMR out. Have them check things out. See what you need. PMRroofing.com. It's a great website. PMRroofing.com. Ask for our buddy Jordan. They'll take really, really good care of you. If you've got questions, send them in. You can call 214-310-0008 or text 214-310-0008. You should just have that phone number saved in your phone under Todd Tremonti, Todd Broker, Todd Realtor, whatever you want to do. And anytime, even when we're not on the air, anytime you have a real estate question about, hey, do you know a vendor for this? Should I add this? When should we buy? Where should we do this? Is it time to sell? Just call or text 214-310-0008. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in this market, and you are not sure if the timing is right, based on interest rates or the economy or the stock market or politics or local politics or anything like that, just call us, just text, go to the website, sign up for a conversation. We can jump on Zoom. You can come by our office in Richardson or our office in Fort Worth, and we would be thrilled to sit down, answer all of your questions and ask you some thought provoking questions to help you figure out if now is the right time for you. And if it's not, and often it is not, we will help you get a plan together for when the right time is. We're not in a hurry. We'll be here whenever you are ready to buy or sell. We're not desperate for you to buy or sell so that we need a commission. We will do the right thing for you at the right time for you and help you make the right decision for three things. You, your family, and your finances. You, your family, and your finances. Go to ToddTremontiTeam.com or save this number in your phone. 214 Three one zero 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 eight. Welcome back, party people. Leaning fully into the microphone here, so that you can hear us loudly and clearly. I am Todd Tremonti. I'm Ian, are you there? Back here, Todd. I'm gonna do it from back. Are here. you? Are you here, I Ian? Hate oh, there's Courtney. There she is, back in the back. Hey, we're gonna get you guys a new intro because Courtney loves to record a new intro. And I'm just going to text her this song that we were talking about at the break because she said literally out loud that she hates everyone. And I know that not to be true. She's a kind and loving soul. Full price Courtney is. Hey, welcome back. This is DFW Real Estate. Thanks for hanging with us through the break and that awkward intro. We're glad to have you. When hey, she says that, though, I just say thank you. Yeah. You just respond to her. Well, I, thank I, you. I love you. Thank you. Your hatred is I don't accept it. 
I did teach my kids the other night, I'm rubber and you're glue, and whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. And I thought it was a fairly mature response to what was being said at the dinner table. My wife did not. So Seems there's that. That's me. There's that. That's not what we're going to talk about on this show, though. We're going to keep talking about all things residential real estate here in the DFW area. And as you know, you can send us your questions. You can text them to 214-310-0008, or you can just call us on 214-310-0008, or you can go online anytime, day or night from any device that you possess, just like my son says. ToddTremontyTeam.com. That's ToddTremontyTeam.com. And as always, the first segment of every part of the show is brought to you by Patrick Lewis and his team at uh, Cardinal Financial. PatrickLewis.com is where you can go to find out all the information you need, whether you're looking to buy, refinance, or just have a question, you can start an application right there on the website, patrickglaros.com. What kind of application? Uh, you know, for mortgages, mortgage, things like that. Mortgage yeah. application. That's I what guess. they do, Todd. They do more mortgages. like home loans is what you're uh-huh. saying. Got yeah, it. refining or just buying is up to you. Got the it. Choice is yours. They're almost endless. Almost. After a couple. Patrickglaros.com, that's where you're going to go. 972-728-3420. NMLS number 30880. Now, I know we've got questions piled up, and you can send us more questions at ToddTremontyTeam.com. Just call or text any phone number, click any button, fill out any form. We will get you taken care of right now during the show, but also anytime throughout the week. Just go to ToddTremontyTeam.com. I know that we got lots of questions piled up and probably have more coming in, but I'd like to take one second to chat about the topic of the week, Silicon Valley Bank. Everyone's talking about SVB, Silicon Valley Bank. Maybe you say Silicon, Silicon Valley Bank. Are you into that? Nope, Silicon. You want to go with Silic- the Silicon? Silicon, Silicon. Doesn't matter. I feel like the faster you say it, the shorter that O is, Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon. Anyway, uh, they're not a bank anymore in the traditional sense because uh, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, FDIC, I think I got that right. I might not, uh, took them over. And the reason is I'll check for you. they got themselves in a wee bit of a mess. We're not going to explain what the mess was, although if you're interested, feel free to reach out. And we'll talk about it. But the reality is this. They got in a little bit of a pickle, as they say, <clears throat> and uh, that sent sort of shockwaves throughout the financial markets and the economic world. And now we have lots of friends, neighbors, clients, prospects saying, what does that mean for the market? What does that mean for the economy? What does that mean for me? as someone who might buy or sell a house in DFW, are all the banks gonna close? Is it 2008 all over again? To be clear, in 2008, bank closures was not the problem. Uh, there were multiple problems, but but the mortgage industry was the one that was probably talked about the most, um, basically giving out bad loans. Um, and again, I have lots of opinions on that, but not for today. Uh, so this is not that. This is sh- absolutely should not lead to that. Uh, and honestly, for a DFW home buyer or seller, this probably won't affect you at all. Literally, will have almost no effect on you. Certainly, your home buying and selling process. Um, interest rates went up, came back down after the last Fed report. Um, they're not as low as they once were. They're certainly not as high as they once were. So all that to say, if you're a Dallas-Fort Worth area person, and you're thinking about buying or selling or investing, which by the way, investing typically involves buying and selling, um, in a house or townhome or a condo, a home that you own in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that should not affect you either way. And that's really all I want to say about it right now. If we get some follow-up questions, we'll take it. But I just think people are freaking out. They're like, bad stuff's in the news. That's bad for me, right? And I just want to say, nope, that really probably shouldn't be good or bad for you in DFW real estate. That should not have a direct effect on us. Your bank is probably totally fine. That bank had a very different kind of business model, therefore was highly susceptible to some problems. A couple other banks have failed. That's not going to be the case for 998 out of 1,000 banks. I mean, all but three banks in America right now. It really hasn't had much of an impact on. But you should be fine. You should be able to borrow. You should be able to buy. You should be able to sell. You should be able to remodel. You should be able to invest. If you want to do those things, go to touchmoneyteam.com. What was your guess on FDIC? Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or company. Nailed it. Corporation. Yeah, yep. thank you very much. For a bonus point, when was it founded? Who was it founded by? Ooh, it was founded uh, after <coughs> the Depression. Uh-huh. 
was actually jeering, but we closed. Well, it. after the beginning, yeah. Um, I. I mean, it Big was big for a bonus point. I'm not gonna guess. I have a feeling, but it's not strong enough to guess on air. Okay. What you, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Oh yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say mm. Congress, but that's the president, obviously. Yeah. But the point is. I mean, it was the United States government response to the markets. It was like, hey, we got, we have a way we can. So here's what they did. And we're not going to take a ton of time on this, but they, people didn't trust banks anymore. This is why it's relevant to DFW real estate. I'll, I'll talk, we'll take a minute on this, but, and that's, that's why I felt the need to share that, right? It's like, whoa, banks are failing. I don't trust banks. I'm not going to get a mortgage. I'm not going to buy a house. I'm not going to sell a house. I'm, I'm taking my money out of the bank and putting it under my pillow. Don't do that. That's, that is why. President Roosevelt and the government, you know, created this institution to insure up to $250,000 of your deposits at the banks. Because A, the way banks are required to operate, th that stuff should never happen. And the vast majority of banks, the vast majority of their depositors, meaning their customers, have less than $250,000 in their account, in any one account. Therefore, they're safe. Even if that bank were to show up tomorrow and be like, we're not a bank anymore, that's okay. Because the government would say, hey, up to $250,000, everybody gets their money back. So they did it to reestablish trust in the banking system. And it actually worked really well. And that's why we should still have trust in the banking system. Now, if the entire United States government were to fail, then we're all in trouble. But hey, if that happens, we're all in trouble anyway. Okay. So that's about all there is to say about that. You're fine. Your bank should certainly be fine. I'm, I'm, you know, there will be an exception somewhere somehow. But uh, especially if you don't have more than $250,000 in any one account, you're totally fine. Now I am safe. What else? Uh, this next segment is brought to you by Republic Title. Republic Title are one of the leaders in the industry, one of the leaders in this particular area. You need to check them out before you buy or sell uh, anything in real estate. RepublicTitle.com is where you can go and get more information on them. I only had, uh, upon returning from vacation, Todd, two major issues with two different title companies. Were any of them Republic Title? Neither of them were oh, Republic okay. Title. Okay, so you're saying that when a title company disaster occurs, which we do a lot of business, so they occur fairly regularly, uh, that it's not with Republic Title. Nope, and these two happened while I was gone, and then I cleaned up the mess on Monday when I arrived back. Appreciate you being back. Also, yep. appreciate Republic Title, because when we see their name on a contract... We can take a deep breath and go, okay, well, they've got We're it. good. They've got it's it. We don't have to, to worry about this. Yep. So go to republictitle.com. They've got payment and closing cost calculators and all sorts of stuff on their website. Whenever you buy, sell, invest, refinance, or do anything related to the title of your property, talk to your professional, ideally the Todd Money home selling team, about working with Republic Title. Republictitle.com. A uh, headline on an article that was sent to me uh, this week. Homebuyers again retreat to the sidelines as higher rates crimp affordability. True, but not entirely true, Carl. Upon further reading of said article, basically what we're so talking about is um, it says mortgage applications rose 28% in one week in the middle of January as rates dipped to 6.2%. This is from USA Today. Uh, it's a website. Always my favorite source of information for reliable information. Hey, I'm just reading what I get sent you, Todd. Uh, now, what it also then says is that this uh, crimping, this higher rate, climbed to 6.6. .6. Yep. We're talking about 0.4%. Now, we're going back last year where we went from, you know, high twos, low threes to yep. seven. Right. Right now, we're talking about 0.4%. So, why, why have What's the message here? Because all that's doing in my mind is to like scare people again. Well, let, let's start with this. Do you believe that the USA Today people have any interest in actually protecting the consumer and advocating for real estate buyers, sellers, or owners? I believe the usatoday.com have an interest in clicks. Yeah. And I'm not even saying that's the worst thing. They're just, they're not in business. the, they're not in the business of necessarily advocating for protecting the consumer. That's our job. And we live here in DFW, I'm literally sitting in our studio in Richardson right now. So the reality is this, if you want advice, information or data, you know, which is information about the real estate market, talk to a local expert. We are free here every Saturday from three to 4 p.m. Check out the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, call or text us anytime throughout the week. Obviously, 
if we're the right fit for you, we'd love to earn your trust, be your agent or your broker. But even if you have a go-to person, we're happy to be an information source of what's true, what's actually happening in this market. I had a conversation with one of our listeners, Don, uh, earlier this week, and I've talked to Don several times over the past year, and he's trying to gather as much information as he can for right. something that might happen down the road in the future. Yep. But like, that's what we're here for. And well that's what done, I said Don. To him. I was like, yeah, just give us a call anytime you've got a question, and we're happy to I answer. say it here almost every week. You can never start too early, but most people start too late to prepare, to buy, sell, invest, build wealth through real estate, right? So get that right. And the way to get it right is start the process as early as you can. So here's the deal. Right now, mortgage rates have moved. They're moving a tenth of a point here, a tenth of a point there. And it does matter. It affects your payment. Sure. It affects your cash to closing and all those things. But what's really happening right now are people are more hyper aware of their interest rate than they have been for years and years and years. When it was absurdly low, we did not see this tightening and these spikes from 2.85 to 3.15, although that's a, actually a bigger jump than what we're talking about. But the reality is um, the payments are higher than they were for a while, but we may see it go from you know 6.2 to 6.6, .6, down to 5.8, up to 6.9. Those are Those jumps do matter, but what we want people to see is beyond the rate. We believe there are five key variables to buying a home. There are many, many others, but the key ones, the big, really, really important ones. And interest rate is only one of those. If you're a home buyer right now in the spring 2023 real estate market in Dallas, Fort Worth, all four of the other four out of five variables are in your favor as a home buyer. One of them, interest rate, is not as great as it once was, but it's also nowhere near as bad as it once was. So they're decent right now. That's what I would call rates right now. They're decent. They're good. They're not amazing. They're certainly not horrible. We can live with them, especially if the cost of buying right now is one of the five variables. Interest rate is not so great. And the other four are in our favor. If you'd like to know what the other four are and how we help buyers build a strategy to navigate them to win really big in this market right now, call or text 214-310-0008. We'll set up a free strategy session for you. It doesn't cost you anything. You're not obligated to anything. You don't have to sign any paperwork if you don't want to. And one of our full-time dedicated buyer specialists will help you put together a plan to either buy now, buy later, or just be more informed. If you're thinking about selling, same exact thing goes, because as a seller, you need to understand buyer demand, buyer confidence, you know, the, the amount of buyers in the marketplace. All of that's available to you completely free with one of our full-time, fully dedicated, world-class real estate specialists who only work with buyers or sellers in your area. And all of that starts with a quick call or text to 214 310 Zero, 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 0008, or you can go online to toddtremonti.team.com, or as many, many do, just Google my name, Todd Tremonti, T R A M O N T E. Get close enough and you'll find us, and we'll get you set up with a free strategy session by Zoom or in our Richardson office or in our Fort Worth office. One of the misleading things that I was reading, and, and it's not just here, I've seen it in multiple other places, is at today's rates, home prices would have to fall 30%. For home buyers buying the medium priced home to have the same monthly payment that they would have had a year ago. And it's just not true. Yeah. Because a year ago they were having to pay fifty, sixty, seventy, a hundred thousand over. Yeah, that's the what flaw. These that's the flaw like. in the in that sentence. Given the same price, today's rates are higher, your payment's gonna be higher. You weren't but getting it for the, the same The difference price. is what and, and gosh, have you heard me say this once? You've heard me say it fifty seven thousand times. Asking price is an irrelevant number. It, and it's not 100% irrelevant. It's like 90% irrelevant because it is relevant because that's what you see when you look up a house. But it doesn't mean that's what it's worth. It doesn't mean that's what you should pay. It doesn't mean it's high. It doesn't mean it's low. It doesn't mean it's accurate at all. It's what someone decided to type into the MLS database. Now, these articles, these phrases, these statistics are built on asking price. That's what they're saying. A home that was asking 400 before, if you got it for 400 at this rate, was a much lower payment. A home that's asking 400 now, if you got it for 400, it's a higher payment at a higher rate. The fact is, people almost never get homes at the asking price. A year ago, people were paying 
$80,000 over asking price on a regular basis. Today, people are paying ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 below asking price on not as regular as the other, but it, that's not terribly uncommon. Well, that's a big difference. That's like a hundred thousand dollar difference if you were paying 80 over or 20 under. And the, to Ian's point, yes, the rate is higher, but we can get you a much better deal on that house with less competition, more favorability from the seller. The seller's much more willing to negotiate, do repairs, allow for some exceptions, and then you have more choices out of homes, period. So you don't have to settle to overpay for a house that you weren't all that thrilled with anyway. So we could go on and on and on forever. We don't have time to do that on the air, but you can call us 214-310-0008 or you can text us at 214-310-0008 or you can go online. Very simple. ToddTremontiTeam.com. If you don't know how to spell that, just Google Todd Tremonti, get real close and you'll find us. ToddTremontiTeam.com. Now, Keen Landscaping. Uh, is about to do another massive install at my home, warrantying some things that didn't make it through the winter, as well as um, some new color and some shrubs and cleaning up some walkway space. They can do the same for you. As a matter of fact, they can do design, consultation, landscaping, construction, landscape maintenance, retaining walls, irrigation, tree work, and a whole bunch of other stuff. They actually also own North Texas Trees. So reach out to them right now at keenlandscaping.com. Don't wait. Don't wait until late spring, early summer to do an install or to have them start maintaining and doing the regular weekly maintenance on your property. Call them right now, 972-424-4851 or online at keenlandscaping.com. K-E-A-N-E landscaping.com. Ask for our buddy, Ben, or if you forget them or anybody else we talk about here on the show, just go to toddtremontiteam.com and click that radio tab and you'll be able to find all the experts we talk to or about here on the show. So I believe we had some questions from somebody that was maybe like looking to move here and they wanted to know about like South Lake specifically. Like mm-hmm. what are some of the things um, that people love about South Lake or any of that, those areas that's like right around there maybe. But like what are your thoughts on that? Like what are you, what would you tell people when they're talking about like specific cities? Like what is it they should be looking for? What is it they should be well, thinking about? first of all, Go to ToddTremontiTeam.com and click on the videos tab. And then we have tons and tons of videos about very specific communities within DFW, right? When we say DFW, technically we're saying Dallas-Fort Worth. But what we mean is the DFW area, the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, the Dal-Worthington MSA. So that includes South Lake and probably 500 other, whatever you might call, cities, towns, communities, within the area. South Lake is south of Grapevine Lake. It's actually not Lake Grapevine, fun fact, Grapevine Lake. Um, and it is really a northern central point between Dallas and Fort Worth. It's almost exactly north of the FW Airport. Um, and it's an area that I like a lot. They do Christmas really, really well in Grapevine. It is literally named Grapevine because of the grapevines, because of the vineyards that were and to some extent still are in that area. Now, I didn't learn until much later in life than I'd like to admit the difference in a vineyard and a winery. The winery is often just the retail store or where they sell the wine. Now, downtown Grapevine has a bunch of really cool wineries as well. Uh, If you're trying to set up a date for next Valentine's or for an anniversary or something, they do these really cool walking tours of downtown Grapevine where you can hit multiple wineries. You can go out to the vineyards as well. All of that to say, Grapevine is named after the grapevines. Shout out to the British Emporium over in Grapevine as well. Okay, apparently that's a hot spot. Oh, also, so um, because of the airports and the central location to Dallas and Fort Worth, um, a hot spot of some really cool resorts. The Gaylord Texans over there. Uh, Great Wolf Lodge is over there. Water parks, um, performance type stuff. Like we've seen kind of a circus deal over at the uh, Gaylord. We've stayed out there for like a one or two night, just fun family getaway. You know, the Gaylord Atrium is amazing. The uh, Great Wolf Indoor Water Park is amazing. The Gaylord Outdoor Water Park is amazing. There's a bunch of good food in downtown Grapevine. Uh, There's a bunch of cool kid stuff with the trains and holiday events and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot more to South Lake. I was talking about Grapevine just because it's nearby, but I like South Lake quite a bit. Um, I like Grapevine Lake quite a bit. 
some of these cool events uh, and, and, and venues are on the lake. And I'm, you know, when I think South Lake, I think about that whole broad area, but South Lake's really well known for its schools, its high school sports are kind of a hotbed of the area. Um, there are some beautiful homes in South Lake. Oftentimes, if you're on social media and you hear like, check out this unbelievable house in the area, it's typically South Lake or Highland Park, right? There are some gorgeous homes in South Lake, but there's also some very approachable neighborhoods in South Lake in the three, four, five hundred thousand dollar range. But there's also multiple, you know, tens of millions of dollar homes in the South Lake area as well. So that's South Lake and Grapevine, which in my mind are they're obviously neighboring communities. You can go West Lake beyond South Lake as well. But um, an awesome, you know, lots of new development. One of my favorite restaurants in all of DFW, Farah, just opened another location in the South Lake Town Center which is a booming, bustling retail, shopping, restaurant, uh, entertainment area. So we like South Lake. Was that too much? No. I was good. Cool. Thank you for all That's of that. That's South Lake, Texas. If you like the information on specific areas, you know, I think historically our assumption has been people that live in DFW know all this, but people tend to stick in their one area. Check out the YouTube channel. You can go to toddtremonteam.com and just click on the videos tab, or you can just search my name, Todd Tremonte, on YouTube. We have hundreds of videos about communities like South Lake or Grapevine or Richardson or Plano or Benbrook or Fort Worth or Dallas or all these different small communities um, where we talk a lot about the cool things and why you would or wouldn't move to some of those areas. Check it all out, toddtremonteam.com, and click on the videos tab. What else is exciting? What other questions are knocking on our door? Otherwise, I'd like to tell you once more about PMR Roofing. Hey, you need PMR to come check your roof because we've had ice, we've had wind, we've had rain, and uh, we here comes the heat. You don't want a roofing problem that leads to thousands of dollars of interior damage like my parents just did. Here comes you the want. Sun. You want to have uh, you want to have your roof checked out. PMRRoofing.com, really good website. PMRRoofing.com. Ask for Jordan Collins; they'll take really good care of you. Here's my last thought for the moment: You need a professional real estate agent to tell you what your home is worth. You can do that really fast in under a minute, automated at ValueThisHouse.com. It will email you an immediate report. If you would like a deep dive, customized version of that, you just reply to that email. And you say, hey, Todd, hey, team, could you do a custom valuation for me? And we'll do it. It's that simple. ValueThisHouse.com. <laughs>